Hey there, Dan Gastu here. Today is about our first coastal cruise down to Sydney in Renko and is proudly sponsored by marineengine.com. Finally got the boat ready to go. A little bit of a rush on Monday, doing a few more things following on from last week's video. But Tuesday came and we headed off. Another slightly crazy morning, last minute preps, but we're off. This is Bronick and his yacht. So they follow them down. Goodbye, Dango Island. See you in a few days. Left about uh, 25 past. Outgoing tide doing 7.6 knots, not too bad, and uh, there's the open ocean. Head out there, turn right, hit Long Reef, back up, go round, turn into the harbour. Easy. Uh, Marine Rescue, this is Soleil, I'm in Broken Bay alongside Lion Island, over. Just at Baron Joey Head at the moment. Almost no swell today, and it's actually forecast to slowly drop off over the next few days. So we're gonna have a very uh, calm trip down and probably an even calmer trip on the way back. way down we saw a few whale spouts and a couple of dolphins heading the other way. Hard to get good shots though with the GoPro anyway. Sydney you can actually see before you get into the harbour there's a few dips in the hills that give you a bit of a view. The other thing I like about Renko being a smaller boat is you can actually stand outside and have your hand on the wheel which is good for night time and getting a good view astern that kind of thing so one upside to being smaller. made it down to Sydney Harbour no problems at all and spent the first night on a courtesy mooring in Atoll Bay which is just inside just west of Bradley's Head which you can see here on the right. Looks like Sydney ports are giving us the traditional uh, ceremonial welcome. Best of all is five free uh, public moorings. None of them have got boats in them. I think this guy's at anchor. Another four free over there. First day of spring and every public mooring's empty. It is a Tuesday, I guess. It's also nice just to have people on the deck instead of compressors and generators and workbenches and all that sort of stuff. Sun's setting now. We're gonna head off to a product shot just over there for dinner. Lights of Sydney now. Nowhere near as cool as uh, Renko's working anchor light though, let's be honest. Except maybe the full moon. As you guys know, below the wheel here is a little cabin and uh, just put single mattress in here. It's a little squeezy. Uh, down the track it'd be nice to convert it to I think what's called a three quarters mattress. Uh, if you, by the time you go to a double bed, you could extend it out a little bit. Uh, it also gets longer, which is too long to fit in here. But there is such thing as a three-quarter, which is kind of, I don't know, not much, but just, just 10 centimetres wider. And I think, you know, it makes all the difference. So I may actually extend this platform a little bit and do that. But it's comfy enough. Just uh, sitting on the laptop this morning, replying to a few comments. Ronick and... Co are uh, having a coffee on their boat too. Then we're going to head over to Farm Co, which is over near the Opera House, so we'll get a closer look at that. Yeah, the ferries normally look quite big, but not next to that. Being moored quite close to the zoo, you actually get to hear quite a lot of the animal noises. On the way to Farm Cove, Bronick went off for a sail, a bit of wind, so he enjoyed that. It's 
it's also worth noting the horns on this post I cut at least 50% off. I don't think there's any way you'd get, uh, you know, the average eye from a mooring, a public mooring, onto this post if it hadn't been cut right down. We'll go astern of the freshwater soon, head over here into Farm Cove, just next to the Opera House. Nothing else coming. Look a stand before you turn. Had to jump ashore to grab a few things, so a little closer view of the Opera House. It's funny, I haven't been to the city for so long. It feels like being a tourist in your own town. You can see uh, Luna Park over under the bridge too. Down in here, I've installed the freshwater tank I was given and wired up the pump using a little inline fuse and a dodgy switch hanging off here. Yeah, very temporary, but it'll give us fresh water while we're on the trip, which is awesome. Good morning. It's now Thursday, so last full day in the harbour, heading back tomorrow. Uh, gonna go pick Dad up now. He's uh, just getting off this ferry to the zoo wharf, so we'll go over there and pick him up and take him for a bit of a spin under the bridge, which means you're going for a spin under the bridge. Street Wharf in Darling Harbour and then headed back out to Middle Harbour. Heading downstream is a safe watermark here off Bradley's Head. Big ships keep it on the left, go right round it. But uh, I think as long as you head out close to it, it's sort of good etiquette. Cutting close to Bradley's head, going downstream, you know, is a risk of a head on. I believe there was a bad collision between two ships, which is why the safe watermark got installed. Yeah, seal down there. There it is, floating around the mark. under low bridges like the Spit Bridge made me glad I measured the air draft of Renko before heading off. 
this I think was about six metres and we were 5.6, so we made it under just fine. We spent Thursday night on another public mooring up in Sugarloaf Bay that was a really nice spot to hang out for a while. It's Friday morning now, we're about to head home. Uh, I'm going to do a few things differently this time. I'm going to use OpenCPN to track the entire journey back, which I didn't do last time, so we'll see the whole total distance, everything like that. Here we are up in Sugarloaf Bay at the moment. On the way down, I logged on with Marine Rescue using the app. Uh, a viewer, David, I hope I got that right, David, yes, I think so, uh, volunteers with Marine Rescue, and he gave me a few tips that I should use the app slightly differently. I didn't register it as a transit, so they presume I think it's a return trip otherwise. So let's have another go at doing that and see if we can get it right this time. Uh, the other thing, there is an option to send your position every, uh, so we're going in Rinko, yes. Next, uh, two people on board, just speak an eye. Oops, there we go. How many hours will be on the water? Uh, took us, let's call it five. About four hours, I think we might have done last time, but we're up Middle Harbour this time. Oh, hang on, let's go back. Uh, you expect a return. Okay, so let's go next still. Uh, start point. Uh, let's call it Middle Harbour, which is sort of the, you know, base, I think, is the Middle Harbour, is the base for the... Uh, Marine Rescue Base, we'll see it as we go past. Uh, now this is the checkbox I didn't do. So this is a transiting voyage, it is. We're not returning. Destination point is, let's have a look, Dangar Island. Choose from map. Uh, okay. So, is we choosing our destination now? I don't know. Dangar Island's got a little fishing spot thing on it. I don't know if we can select that as a location. Dangar Island Public Wharf? Yes. Okay, hopefully that's right. Uh, so you can track me. This is the thing we can say. So we're setting our position every half hour. Okay. So. Logging on, 945, expect to return 243, destination Dangar Island Public Wharf. Cool. Got the rain going as always. Um, now, how did we do, oh, is this the track? Let's not use the touch screen, that doesn't seem to work so well. So, yes, so I think tracking's on, which is why it's highlighted. So let's just double check, disable, enable, yep. All right, done. That'll give us the full route which I can uh, share with you when we get home. There's the uh, spit bridge open. Ronick is a bit ahead of us to get the opening because he's got quite a tall mast. Even a reasonably tall powerboat going through at the moment. I didn't bother rushing because we can fit under anyway. But there it is, just lifts up like that. There's the marine rescue base. Thank you guys. Looked like they were conducting some hazard reduction burns on North Head as we were heading out. Looking a bit bleak behind us. A bit of rain coming. I know you all want to go flicking lures through that, don't you? We eventually pulled back into Broken Bay, a little later than expected. Marine Rescue actually called to see if I wanted to extend my log on time, but we just logged off. And before long, we were uh, back off Dangar Island. Well, we made it, home sweet home. Okay, here is the track that I did on OpenCPN the whole way. So let's have a look. A few highlights, I guess, is total distance was 21 nautical miles. Uh, went an average of 5.17 knots and took us five hours 37, apparently. All right, there's the track. It just fits in from Sugarloaf Bay, where we spent the last night, up the coast, into the Hawkesbury River, up to Dengar.
Well, thanks for watching, and uh, please report. Nothing, you know, went wrong with the boat at all, which was awesome. Uh, obviously, things need adding, and I've got a list, you know, as long as your arm of things that I just need to push on and do next. There's a lot. <laughs> uh, but I really got to pull that engine out and get Adrian to fix it 100%. It runs sweetly, you know, it, there's no drama about it stopping or anything like that, but um, the stuck ring causes combustion gases to bypass and it pressurizes the crankcase and that's what's causing our sort of oil out the breather, oil out the exhaust, all this kind of stuff. So I'm going to have to bite the bullet at some stage, find the money and just get Adrian to fix it 100%. And then it can stay in there for another 20 years, you know, once it's done, the servicing will be, you know, everything will be accessible. So although it's not stopping me using the boat, um, I'm going to give him a call, you know, next week and just start getting the ball rolling to make that happen. I figure, look, summer's coming. Let's make it 100% before it gets here. It is now spring. First of spring was the day we set off. All right, a little bit of a different video, obviously, this week. Um, now the boat's running, it's not going to turn into just montages of cruising around Sydney, you know, don't worry about that. But um, it was nice just to take it for its first real shakedown cruise and, you know, have it pass it flying colours, so that was great. All right, well, take care, and I'll catch you next week when we start getting into that big list of improvements I need to make. Home tired from the trip and the welcome wagons approaching. What's up Daffy, you hungry are you? You've had Marg feeding you while we're away. But does she not give in as often as I do? Is that what it is? All right, let me get you some food. You run around in circles, Daisy. That's your job. Who's following? I've only just got home, Daffy, come on. Come on. Daffy. Come on. Thanks for the welcome. Yeah, come on. Limp along. <sighs> so you're gonna wait there where you know you're supposed to stop. There you go, have some rice. Can't be bothered getting anything else right now. How was your week? You're all quiet now, you got food. Oh. Should we have brought you? You would have hated it, trust me. Can't scratch on a steel deck. Can't find worms. Well, glad you guys are okay. <laughs> Don't peck Daisy. You can't have a pecking order when there's only two of you, that's not fair. Oh, here comes the rain again. Let's go have a shower.